What is up everybody, uh, Sean Sheen here for SevereMMA.com with another edition of the size up. This time it's for UFC 222 as Chris Cyborg defends her featherweight title against Yana Kunitskaya with chief support coming from Frankie Edgar as he takes on Brian Ortega. Uh, this event has gone down in the T-Mobile Arena in Las Vegas and I'm basically here just to run through the top two fights in the card, give my picks for the fights after that and uh, just a general bit of analysis on the top two fights and I, I have a better week coming as well at the end of the video start times and all that so check that out um if you're watching this on severemail.com i'll have my picks down below as well or if you're watching on youtube head on over there severemail.com and you can uh, you can read them there but let's get straight into it and i want to get into the main event uh, between chris cyborg and yana kunitskaya now a lot of people including myself didn't know that much of in about yana kunitskaya we obviously saw her against tanya evinger in uh, her last couple of uh, tanya's last couple of fights in invicta and there isn't really a lot we learned from those fights apart from you know what she really wants to do in fights and what she really wants to do in fights a lot of the time is she wants to and we'll see this in the comment in, in main event as well is she wants to win those big moments you know in, in that first fight with Avenger, she got the submission it was overturned but that's that's the kind of thing she does in the second fight she almost got that submission early as well she goes for those big moments looking back at some of her other older fights she does the same with her striking she lands tries to land those big shots go for those big head kicks you know big knockout blows so that's definitely the good part for game and that's kind of an all-around what kind of a fighter she actually is then you add in her size now she's fought at 135 and obviously you know a lot of her fights 135 but i think she i think she's a genuine enough 145 pounder that you're you know compared to some like leslie smith and some of other cyborgs uh competitors she's the same height as cyborg she's big she's strong so that's a plus point you can you can give for gun sky coming into this fight so you know wh what i think she'll probably do is probably try to land those big strikes from afar if it gets close try to get the clinch and try to work cyborg there she's a very good clinch and uh, she's a very good bottom game as well but that's going to be obviously very hard we know chris cyborg is like just an absolute monster everywhere really good in the clinch as i mentioned there with, with kunskaya her striking has always been absolutely devastating and powerful but now it's turned technical as well in her last few fights especially she's become a really really technically good fighter she always was but even more so with a, with a whole game plan and all that the working with jason perillo is an absolute wonders for her so there is that cyborg everywhere no real weaknesses in her game uh how's you know putting those two together how's kunskaya gonna match up and the only answer is really not very well how can she win the fight you know i mentioned the clinch can she win it in the clinch maybe probably not um she, she, maybe she'll be able to use her power is cyborg more powerful yeah she is uh, so that that's going to be tough but i think that is her big area maybe if she gets taken down she's her submission game is probably her her best asset of or her best way to win to win here um she's very sneaky off her back she's as i mentioned she's strong when you do take her down she moves that maybe she doesn't get up all the time she on her takedown defense to get there before that all isn't isn't that great to be honest but once she gets down she's strong at moving maybe not at getting up all the time but if you if you get her in a certain position she's good at getting up because she, as i mentioned she is she is very strong but i think that's her best best bet maybe you know it's clinched when it goes to ground submission but uh, her top game is is also very good if she can get on top but it's unlikely that she gets on top of cyborg you know looking at this fight <coughs> i think cyborg sh as i mentioned the added technical ability she's put onto her game i think it's a respect for fighters she's fighting as well and i think she will go back and watch kunitskaya i know she's only what was it three weeks to prepare for this fight but she'll go back she'll look at kunitskaya look at her game look at how she's been strong in the clinch and i think she'll try to strike or try to make it a technical match try to land her big shots when she can when she can get inside and stay away from kunitskaya as well when she gets inside not let her clinch up so i think that's what cyborg will do and i think doing that might last two rounds i think maybe you know kunitskaya is she's she's just not a th on the level of chris cyborg let's be honest she's a good fighter and everything uh, she can have big moments but i would give her a very 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 slim chance of winning this one and you know that's my pick for chris cyborg to win here first couple of rounds i think she'll just be too powerful too technically good and be able to stop everything kunitskaya tries to do so chris cyborg definitely in that one in the comment event 
uh, Frankie Edgar against Brian Ortega in another interesting fight. Obviously, this fight was due to be headlined by Frankie Edgar challenging for Max Holloway's featherweight title. But now Edgar goes back and it's a three-round co-main event against TCD Brian Ortega, who has been on an absolute roll lately, submitting, knocking people out, third-round finishes galore. And it's another, another fight between a guy, maybe a little... It's a different thing Cullen Sky, like, but the big moments... You know, Cunnan Sky will be looking for the big moments. Ortega as well will be looking for the big moments, and uh, he's an, obviously a lot more of a shot than Cunnan Sky has. Um, but I think Edgar, <coughs> right? You look at you look at Edgar versus Ortega. You look at the matchup, and you, okay, you think Frank Edgar, very good striker, very good wrestler, very good at putting it together. Maybe he won't want to use the wrestling as much in this because we know Brian Ortega is a, a, a tremendous, tremendous jiu-jitsu artist, one of the best in in that division. Oh, oh, you know, top, you know, jiu-jitsu people tell me top 10, top 15 in the UFC maybe, and uh, in MMA jiu-jitsu as well, very, very good, he, he can just grab submissions from anywhere, Um. so with that being said, as I mentioned, probably looking for Edgar maybe to stay away from his wrestling a little bit, or if he does get a very, very strong uh, <coughs> top game, don't take any chances on the ground, but use his striking on the outside, uh, or sorry, coming, coming inside, because he's obviously a smaller guy than Ortega, use his striking, come in get on the inside land his three four five shots that frankie edgar loves to do get back out use his footwork brilliant there so that's what edgar will be trying to do Ortega, as i mentioned looking for the big moments now i think i've picked out kind of thinking about this fight and thinking about the overall picture which is kind of how i like to do my analysis edgar is very good at the in-between bits very good at his head movement he lands his shots defense gets away moves around you see edgar he pivots a lot all the time with his with his feet to get out and get in Brian Ortega is not great at that. Now, I've talked about his striking before, and a lot of people have, and that it's not that good. Uh, watching the tape again for this video, it's not as bad as maybe I've said, and maybe other people have said as well. He's very good jab, throws well behind it, uh, good combinations, good kicks, kicks well. You know, obviously, he, he, when you've got into his ground game, very good jiu jitsu. Uh, maybe not the you know the best wrestling in the world, but he finds ways of getting it there. But as I mentioned, we've put Edgar good at the in between bits. That's where Ortega, I think, struggles. So, like, just a small thing, like Frank Edgar landing the shots, pivoting to the left, pivoting to the right, getting away, and not being there to be hit after he hits you. That's not what Ortega is good at. That that's where he struggles a little bit, and that's what something he'll improve. That's something he'll improve on because he's gone from that base, you know, and to putting it all together. Where Frank Edgar's obviously had years and years and years doing it at the top level. So, that that's where I think Edgar will win the fight he'll win it in those in between bits and if it goes five rounds you know or sorry if it goes the whole three rounds and goes to the decision i'd be very very surprised if frankie edgar didn't win it because i will i do think he will win the large majority of this fight but it is those big moments you know this is the difference between any other sport soccer you know if you score five goals and the other team scores has one big moment scores one they lose five one but you know you frank edgar could be losing or could be winning this fight five nil and then edgar get or uh, ortega gets that one moment and he wins the fight and that's it so that that's the difference between mma and ortega can do that we've seen him doing it before i was watching that clay guiga fight you know a similar type not, obviously not in the level of frank edgar but you know kind of wrestle boxer who moves a lot and it's an interesting fight to watch and, and clay guida absolutely tore ortega up in that fight and he was winning that fight well until he got hit with a big knee late. You know, you saw his fight against Cub Swanson. You've seen a lot of his other fights where he gets that, <coughs> that um, the joke. He can get it from anywhere. You know, you give him one chance on the ground, and he has you get him in the clinch. He'll jump on it. You know, he that is it. He is one of those guys who really, really can catch you from anywhere. But against Frank Edgar, that's going to be tough. Frank Edgar is one of the most, not just the most durable guys, but one of the most intelligent, one of the smartest guys in the game. And everyone that has beaten him has either, you know, outsmarted him or been a little, you know, been a little bit bigger. You know, most of his fights have been very close that he's lost. Look at it, like the Benson Henderson fights. He took him on strike for strike over five rounds. Uh, Josie Aldo beat him twice, like, like Henderson. Strike for strike over five rounds. That's how you beat Frankie Edgar, usually. And it, no one, we've never seen someone beating him with one strike. You know, a lot of people talked about him fighting McGregor. You know, that's probably how McGregor would be uh, thinking about beating him as well. Um, and that's how Ortega will obviously be thinking about beating him, in my opinion. And I don't think he will do that. Now, it, it, that's if I have to call it. Can he do it? 100%. He can definitely do it. But we've never seen it happen to Frankie Edgar before. Um, 
and I'm not sure this is the time. I don't think Edgar has long left at the top, to be honest. I think he's a really, really good fighter, really great fighter, but you know he's had a lot of fights, a lot of you know maybe not a lot of I mean, he's had a lot of wars. I'm sure he's got, uh, had a good few wars, but there's only so much you can say at the top. But I don't think, I don't think this is the time. I don't think Ortega is the guy uh, yet. I think Ortega in a few years will be a lot better of a fighter if he can put those things together. But yeah, now I'm picking Frankie Edgar over uh, over three rounds. Um, after that, then there's some good fights. You've uh, you have uh, sh- I'll just run through a couple of them here. You've Sugar Sean O'Malley taking on uh, Andre Sukumtat. Um, I'm gonna go with Sukumtat in that one. I think uh, O'Malley is still a little bit raw. Um, he's a very good fighter. I think he's gonna be become one of the very very good fighters in the game. But I'm not sure. Yeah, I think Sukumtat is a little bit crafty as well. I think he could win that. And I think it'll be close. I think it'll probably be three rounds. But I'm just gonna barely go Sukumtat in that one. Um, I'm gonna go Stefan Struve as well to beat Arlovsky. I just think he's too big. You know, Struve kind of had a downfall there for a while, but he came back. Um, again, I think Arlovsky is just way off the pace at this stage. Even though he, he had a couple of good results or one good result anyway uh, lately. Kat Zingano wins Ketlin Vieira. I'm going to go with Vieira on that one. Uh, I think Zingano's just been out too long. She hasn't fallen off, although she is top level. And I think uh, Vieira has been improving fighting. Obviously, she beat Sarah McMahon in her last fight. Uh, I think it'll be another close one. You know, if Zingano's at her best, I think she'd probably win. But it's hard to be able to see her be at her best. So, uh, yeah, I'm going to go with uh, Vieira on that one. After that, then, I suppose McKinsey Durham is the big name on the undercard. If people don't know her, you know champion jiu-jitsu artists uh she's coming in here against ashley yoder and i think darren will probably get it down to the ground and win it but i'm looking now for uh, improvements in darren's game in that one her last fight in invicta she looked to have improved striking and, and she looked not great but she looked definitely improving so i look forward to that one and going with darren that one after that then i'm going for benny darius john dodson i think um i think uh, cb dalloway will be hector lombard uh, in, in a close enough fight, uh, I don't know, is Lombard the same guy he used to be? I'm taking Zach Otto, uh, Otto over my pile and my pile with his retirement fight. You know, we know him in retirement, but um, we'll see that one. Brian Carroll is coming back too. Uh, I think Carroll in that night, taking Johnson as well there in the opener. So, yeah, that's it. SevereMail.com. Check out my uh, the picks, obviously, I just named there, but you see them all out. Actually, my bet of the week as well. I'm going for 3 to 1 accumulator here. I'm going for Edgar Struve, Darren, and Darius. That comes out around 3 to 1. So, um, yeah, let me know if, if you, if you uh, think those picks are good. Um, the car is starting half 11 Irish time on Five Pass, then uh, on at 1 o'clock on Five Pass and uh, BT Sport for the prelim card and then at 3 a.m over on bt sport for the main card thanks everyone for watching follow me on twitter at john gmba obviously go over to severemma.com for everyone during the week uh we'll have the fallout from the card on the severe mma podcast out probably sunday night monday morning so check that out please thanks for watching again and i'll see you